So if you found yourself here, you are either thinking about buying a Garner N1 or you've already bought one. Apologies if I'm going over things that you already know, but I'm going to go over some general tips as we go. Just for anybody that hasn't built a car before or has only built one or two, maybe we can learn something. When it comes to putting the gaskets in, always make sure they're pre-lubed. I tend to do this by putting some oil, shock oil or diff oil, as long as it's silicon based oil, onto the diff case and then onto the ring gear, just to make sure that that gasket is going in lubed, not in dry, nobody likes to go in dry. Just make sure that it's got a nice covering of oil and this should stop any future leaks and just give you a little bit of extra security. Okay, so there we have step one, diffs, all done. Gotta say, build, quality, awesome. I love the double bearing system. Gonna be really durable, really smooth. Comes as standard with the 47 spur gear. And then we've got the 43 two ring gears there. I haven't put any oil in them at the moment because I am not sure on what setup I'm gonna go with next weekend yet. So we're going to be popping to Nemo HQ and we're going to have a chat with them then. So we're going to do that track side on Friday. But yeah, diffs, awesome. Gotta say, I do love how thick and solid the arms are. I mean, they are nice. So just putting the out drives into the hubs now. So this is going to be the front that we're building up first. Again, everything just goes together so well. Just make sure, again, for free movement at every step. Always make sure you're just cleaning screws and grub screws off with some brake cleaner or something similar just to get any residue off any mold release, any agents, anything that shouldn't be on the screws that might affect the lock thread from working, especially in this area. There's a little tip here. comes as thread lock in the screw that goes through the caster block into here. Don't put thread lock on the screw itself because sometimes it can get caught in the little top hat or the insert. So we're just going to pop a little bit of thread lock inside the hub. Because then we know that thread lock will only be where it's supposed to be. So we're just popping the sway bar together now, or the links for the sway bar. Guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. I know it's not the most exciting video, but it could lead to an exciting time for you if you are picking up one of these buggies, or just any buggy. Please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'm getting lots of views at the moment, which is absolutely awesome. And the subscribers and you guys are coming in and we're building an awesome audience. But please hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. And I'd really like to know where you are in the world, what you race, what you're planning on racing. <laughs> so onto the front gearbox casing. 
This is where it started getting really interesting. Putting together conventional buggies for so long, it was nice to have something different. And very much alien. These levers and arms doesn't make a lot of sense initially. Certainly if you haven't seen one of these cars before. But as you go through the build, it starts making a lot of sense. And believe me, on the track, you can feel it too. Awesome. So we're just doing these finger tight for the second, but obviously we need to lock them up. As you can see there, the diff sitting in the case, easy access pinion, easy access maintenance, super smooth. We love it. Doing these front components, popping them all together now. Nice little shot of the pills there. But that's the front end, near enough done. Awesome. Sway bar, easy. It's really short, but it works. So we're straight on to the rear clip or the rear section. Don't forget to grease the inserts here before they go into the shaft themselves. I like to use this green grease, which I'm actually going to be releasing soon. So keep an eye on the YouTube channel for this. We're going to have a store coming up soon and we're going to start using some recommended items. It's going to be good. Easy peasy. Rear hub carriers, no problem at all. Just take note of how thick the rear arms are. They're not going to be breaking anytime soon got inserts here which obviously you can change kit setup is the outside hole look at those levers awesome so on to the top of the diff case now So some crucial things coming up and if you haven't seen my recent video of the hearts gp you'll see why it's even more crucial we've got the diff case just going on to the lower part of the case soon and there's two button head screws underneath where the body shell mount sits and i forgot to do them up so it was a disaster so if you haven't seen that video go and check it out it was a disaster but it turned out okay the casing just slots together now again just check for free movement always always do that can't stress enough how much you will save time if you just check for free movement here so we are nearing the end of the rear section again just checking over everything just making sure everything is correct and everything's nice and free easy it's obviously not finished but it's looking awesome so far we're on to the center diff housing and assembly just make sure when you're screwing the cap head screws down into the mounts beat them up beat them up tight and then just back them off maybe half a turn possibly even a full turn they don't need to be lock solid here you can just put the screws in tight and then just back them off this is something we've done for quite a few years now with the agama cars well like to be shown i'm glad nothing really of interest or to note on the radio tray other than you can consider the stiffness it's always a nice option part on the radio tray although initially i didn't put them on it was absolutely fine but for that extra security go for it see the lower part of the engine mounts now 
always lock thread these metal to metal lock thread i always like the blue lock thread myself but use whatever you like whatever you're comfortable with but always use lock thread on anything metal to metal some cars that i've had in the past quite often with this collet that you screw up it's extremely difficult depending on the tightness of the spring with the agama one it's nice you can get a grip on it with your fingers you don't need to use any tools or anything like that you can just wind it up with your hand and it stays exactly where it is so that's always a nice touch and just double check that it is the right tolerance and the right size as per the manual when it comes to setting the rating on the steering When it comes to fitting the side guards, just remember the hole is on an angle, so make sure you angle your driver as per the hole. Last thing you want to do is strip a thread in the chassis, so just make sure they are going in at the correct angle. Oh boy, it's definitely starting to look like a car now. We've got the front end on. Just about to put the rear end on and it's all going to start coming together and looking like something we're going to take to the track. Rear end on. Now it's really coming together. Looking awesome. Radio tray, pop that into place. M3 screws through the chassis. Super easy, easy to remove as well if you ever need to in the future. And there's that awesome wing mount. Something that literally just stands out in pictures on the track. It does really, really look good. Stiffener comes standard with the kit. So definitely make sure you fit that. Although they are going to be making a change to it in the future to the mount where the wing sits and that stiffener shouldn't be required but for now put it on. And there we have it, something that resembles a car that's going to be awesome on the track. Last thing now, it's just the shocks and then we are ready to go.
Thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, please drop us a like, hit the subscribe button, turn the notifications on, and I'll see you in the next one.